spoken of these trees. So we just got an order of trees and other perennial plants from Rain Tree Nursery. So we're gonna open up these trees and see what we have in here. And we're gonna be planting them this weekend. So we'll take you guys along with us to see what we're adding to our orchard. Let's do it. Let's just get stuff out before looking at it. Okay. Yes, this? like a, I think it's a type of Huckleberry. Berry. Huckleberry. So we've got two hazelnuts. These are, what were they called, babe? McDonald and uh, we we Webster. Webster, which is hard to say, Webster. This, which is called silverberry or gummy berry, the variety specifically is called gummy sweet scarlet. So they produce like a large, really sweet berry. And then in here we have an evergreen huckleberry. It sounds like the berries appear on August, which is kind of nice, a little later than other berries. Rovada red currant. Black velvet gooseberries. I don't know, I don't remember what this is. Every Knopf Medler. A chestnut? The other one is a chestnut. It's right here. A grafted chestnut. That'll be cool. So yeah, chestnuts take a long time to produce, What's but hazelnuts do not. Hazelnuts are very fast growing nut trees and they grow really well in upstate New York, so I'm excited about those. You tell me you're scared you think and I know it's hard yeah I know it's rough but we'll make it so we are getting ready to plant the chestnut tree oh look at all those wormies and we're planting it in the middle of this like fenced off pasture next to the barn because chestnut trees grow tall they're huge and um, we thought this would be kind of a nice spot the trees came from rain tree nursery out of washington state about half of the plants came bare root and the other half came in pots with soil everything arrived in great shape ready to be planted and we just gave them a couple of days before getting them in the ground. And so far they're doing great, even as we have snow in the ground in the middle of May. So if you're looking for a place to source your trees for an orchard, I recommend checking them out. I'll put the information in the description below. And then we're gonna plant the other, I think we have some hazelnuts and some berries and a couple other things that we're gonna plant in the main orchard area, as well as around the gardens. So. Yeah, but this tree is required a little bit more thoughtfulness with how you're gonna plant it because we don't want it to, we want it to be able to grow nice and big and we don't want it to shade out other trees in the orchard. Definitely. And eventually it's gonna need a partner close by. So maybe we could plant another chestnut tree over like the side woods or, or even- Or even like a little further down there. Even in this general area, yeah. so. This is a pretty well draining area as well. Yes. So that's what we were looking for. Well draining, uh, chestnut trees like sandy loamy soil, which we don't have super sandy soil. Um, we have we do have loamy soil, but our soil here is is pretty dry and actually looks really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the soil. You can see here it's nice and loamy. It's like a dark color, but it's not too too heavy. You want to dig a little bit just to show them. See how like nice and loose that is. I mean we've got some like clay in there, and the deeper you go, it gets more clay, but. It's really actually pretty nice, pretty well draining, um, not super heavy, so this is a good spot for it. Do you think this is wide enough? No, it needs to be a little wider probably. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to plant trees. We follow a more permaculture approach to planting our trees, and in doing so, we just plant them in native soil, and that is because trees are perennials right so they're not growing in one season and they're done they're going to come back year after year and their roots are eventually going to spread like in this whole area we can't dig up the whole area and fill it with compost and sand or whatever the, the tree prefers so our best strategy is to plant them in native soil and help them adjust to our soil as quickly as possible and if they're going to survive in our climate they're going to survive and if they're not 
one year of filling the hole with compost isn't going to help them because by the time they get to our native soil and their roots start to spread, they're actually gonna really suffer and potentially die at that point, as opposed to being well adjusted and really taking root in the surrounding area. So this will help their roots spread faster as they're more acclimated to our soil. So yeah, this soil actually looks really good. We may actually want to consider planting more trees in this area because this is actually a lot better than the soil in the front, I would say. Would you agree with that? I would. I would yeah. like to actually use this area more. Yeah, so. Dead space right now on our property. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could use we could use this whole area. Close to our really. barn, so. It's yeah, it's close to the barn. It gets like full sun. This could be like an extension of a food forest. We could plant, you know, some nut trees back here, some fruit trees. Yeah, so our approach to our food forest orchard is that we're using our whole property, really. Um, obviously we're not using places like the horse pastures or like the chicken coop, but we are using a lot of land that currently is being unused. We just want to spread it out and give trees adequate space to grow. We have like 12 and a half acres. We have plenty of room to plant things. So there's no reason to kind of squash it into a half acre area or something like that, especially when we have, you know, areas like this with such good soil. So what Chris is doing right now, he is I'm trying to get the focus. He is digging a hole about, I would say that's about two and a half feet wide. Go about like a foot and a half deep in the middle where most of the roots are gonna be. And just loosen the soil on the bottom. And then we'll add back the loosest soil to the hole. Create a mound in the middle so that the roots slope away from the tree downwards and out. Yeah, so you wanna encourage the roots to go out instead of go down. Um, just because the hole is so deep, it's so wide, and so the roots have that loose soil to go out into. So yeah, that's what we're doing. That's our strategy with planting trees. So far we've only lost one tree, and that one was weak to begin with. But everything else is, is alive, so that's good. And we had a really, really wet spring last year, so things did struggle with some root rot. Yeah, that soil is great. I mean, look at this stuff. It's so loose. We have some it's the real biggest big one we've rocks. gotten so far. Huh? It's definitely the biggest one we've gotten so far out of this yeah. hole. Okay. okay, let's look at the tree. Sure. Look at your. Well, the water's really close, so that's good. Yeah. Marsol grafted chestnut. A grafted chestnut. Okay, so what you can see is he's got the bare root tree, so it's just the bare roots and it's been wrapped in a damp newspaper to protect the roots and it's nice and warm out so we want to get this in the soil ASAP. right away yep once you get them planted they start to leaf out pretty quick because they're absorbing all those nutrients from their freshly planted hole <laughs> so he's spreading out the roots in the hole as he talked about earlier just to encourage them to seek nutrients out instead of down you want the line of the tree right here to be level with the ground. Right now it's a little low. I think, I think that's about good. If I ask you there we go, almost planted. Yeah, it's just a little crooked. So then he'll add back in the facade, he'll flip it some of it <laughs> yeah and finally after this we'll add um, a mulch okay first tree planted let's go we should probably get some water on this right away right yeah since, especially since it's hot today yeah let's get um get our bucket what a uh, 10 gallons or so total yeah two buckets two buckets First tree down. Yeah, you can't see my thumbs up. This is definitely the warmest day we've had so far. This spring, it's like hot. I mean, it's not hot. It's like 60s, but sunny. So, yeah, hot, I guess. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, before we plant each tree, we research them to decide like where we should plant them, what kind of soil they need, all that good stuff. 
we've got 10 gallons of water to go to go over with this tree just to give it lots of water real fast nice big drink ready yep What you don't want to see when you water it is see like the water clearly like flowing away from the hole. That's why you're not going to want to plant it mounded up or anything like that. You want it flat so the water goes straight to the roots. It doesn't really run off, which this is pretty good. It's not really running off anywhere, clearly. I want to wait a little bit, maybe mulch it okay. and then finish watering so it has a chance. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll grab some wood. Don't hold back on me Only better If you set it free So the mulching step is super important after planting it's really important after planting and it's really important throughout the year. So you wanna make sure it's mulched and there's not tons of grass growing in or weeds growing in just because, well, it's twofold. One, the mulch helps absorb the moisture, which helps feed moisture to the soil below and feeding your plants lots of moisture and maintaining the moisture. And also it keeps weeds from like crowding out the roots of your trees and shrubs and um, it's the same thing with gardening. You don't want tons of weeds coming up in your garden because that's going to steal nutrients from your garden vegetables. So we always mulch. We mulch everything and it helps a lot with lots of things. <laughs> so next we have, I think, a medlar tree and then we have the rest are perennial fruit bush bushes and then, or like fruit shrubs and a couple hazelnut saplings, which all should be much easier to plant than trees. We can see everything clear. Are we really happy here? 